Put God in there into, into the Lord's family. We don't know all of his ways. We seek to know him as a disciple. We put on his ways. That's what discipleship means. Being conformed to the image and the likeness of God. Putting on his ways. Discipleship. I look like Christ. I talk like Christ. I act like Christ. My ways are like Christ. I'm putting off me and putting on more of him. Y'all all right? If that be the case, then he, he has to say it like this. Two becomes one. That means we're not perfected when we come together. But now that we're made in the likeness and image of God, we have the procreative power to call those things that are not to be as though they were. In other words, I can perfect Sister Williams. Sister Williams can perfect me. Because we got the power to speak. You understand? And because we got the same Father, the same Lord, we can reason together. And we can work our differences out. And how many know some kind of normal? You can stay together, you start learning more about each other. And you start appreciating more about each other. And you'll start thinking alike. All of them start favoring each other. And this ain't scripture here, but sometimes your old dog can stay around the house so long he'll start looking like he'll be in the family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's people that take pictures of dogs, they do favor. <laughs> I want to clear that. I don't want nobody to hear saying you should say I look like a dog. I didn't say that. You the dog. But we're dealing with a situation now where the Sabbath school lesson, if you have that, go back and I promise you, you'll enjoy talking about love and respect. We're in a generation now where you see very little love and respect. Remember the situation that happened in the Bible was Solomon was king and he was called a great judge. There was a woman, two women that had babies and in the night one woman went to sleep, slept on her baby, smothered it, the baby died. But in the night, she took the living child and put the dead child in the other mother's bed. When she awakened, they were squabbling. The woman said, I know my baby. This is not your child. This is my child. Everything that she had to do something to see, maybe even change the clothes on the child. Because it had to look like she had to have something to work with. So that was an argument. These are my baby's clothes. These are my baby's shoes. So she had time to do that if she had taken the child. Solomon looked and he listened. And I can do this here today. I ain't gonna pull it out, but this is what you know I got to do. In case y'all have a problem with y'all's babies. <laughs> <laughs> so don't ever rush me. <laughs> Y'all see? Solomon said, bring the baby here. He didn't tell him what he was going to do. He said, just bring the child. And he set that child on a platform. And he turned around like so. And the real mother, oh no! Give the child to her. And Solomon said, Take that child. Give it to the rightful baby. Give it to the rightful mother. Because the real mother said, Before you kill him, let him live. Even if he's not with me, let him live. The other woman said, Divide him. What sense does that make? Good sense to Solomon, because it gave him the knowledge of who the rightful mother was. Are y'all seeing this thing? So God just placed men in the earth with this thing like that. The thought never had to come to him. But the Bible said he prayed for an understanding heart. Y'all see how man will really understand his heart is? Because some things with people you can't get certain books to understand nothing. I'm telling you. It's hard to get people to understand. I don't care what you say. No, 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 no. 
We have to pray for an understanding heart. The people are trying to name it everything. Pray for a merry heart. Can't stay happy long enough. Oh, that person had bipolar. No, they just need a, a merry heart. The doctor gonna call you something. Gonna call you ignorant. Gonna call you schizophrenic. And you just need to be delivered from demonic oppression. A lot of these kids screaming, ah, can't shut up. They can't. You gotta find out what the problem is. Is this a problem? Every child don't need to be slammed. When babies are crying in church, especially if they are still in diapers, you gotta think about, well, it could be diaper rash. Could be teething. But you gotta understand, the enemy knows our tolerance level. And before we look into the real situation, because we're frustrated, we want vengeance, and that ends up being either slapping the child, cursing the child. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how serious you take this, but that was just a couple on the television where a man was on the news looking for his son. Anybody seen my son? Anybody seen my son? He's in tears. And the woman he married to had locked the boy up in a back room had basement and had, he had been there a while. He didn't know she was she didn't he didn't know the boy was back there, but he did know they had been making the kids fat, making the boy fast, making him do uh, exercise, and he had to do it till they got till they got satisfied. He was a little chubby, they wanted him to lose weight. You'd be surprised how people manipulate folks. How they mistreat children. That's, that's why you have laws for governments of abuse. And it's needed. Yes, it is. Because you got moms that don't know how to raise the children. You got fathers that don't want no child. No matter what, shut up, you hollering baby. But if he's the baby's gonna howl sometime, you can't talk. So we're living in a critical time, the Bible calls it perilous times, where men become lovers of themselves, totally intolerant, can't tolerate nothing, can't stand to be refused, can't stand to be rejected, don't ever want to hear no, 